Yes, guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler. Bugsy Malone is just down here. We're at the park. I hope you're all doing things that you love on this Monday morning. Please hit the like button for me on the video if you enjoy the content, even if you don't particularly enjoy this one, but you have enjoyed others, then hit the like button, please. It really helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topics. Just before we get into it, guys, live streams are back this week. I've been off for the last couple of weeks, but I'm bringing back the live streams. Uh, also, you can watch all of this stuff if Spotify is your preferred version, then you can check it out there. And uh, also don't forget that the uh, merch store is up. This is another little cheeky version of the hoodies. I've yeah, got hoodies, t-shirts, and flat caps are coming soon as well. Uh, guys, look, before we get into the two transfer news views and clues, in fact, I'll start with them. First and foremost, you have Calafiori from Bologna, the left-footed, left-sided centre-back who can play left-back. Look, a very talented 21-year-old Italian. Um, you know, he's, he's strong, he's, he's fierce in the tackle. You know, he's, he's a very impressive young player and he's touted and wanted by a hell of a lot of teams. Sounds great, but he's not going to come in and, disp and, and move Mickey van der Ven out of the way. For me... If Tottenham are still trying to complete their back four, you know, for the strength in depth, that's, that's absolutely fine with, with me. But I believe that the first 11's back four is already done. I'd be very surprised if we're going to improve on Van der Ven, Udogi, Romero and Porro, absent one of those guys going. And so hearing that we're going to be buying a, 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 you know, a, a backup centre-back, it's fine. I'm OK with it, whatever. I know we need to get it done, but it reminds me of a bigger problem and that is that Tottenham are conceding what is it 49 goals this so far this season which is far too many if we're a team that wants to try to move to the title level next season which is what Ange has been saying then surely we need to have at least 15 to 20 goals fewer in the back of our own net every year and if I'm entirely honest when I think about the game's where we've won late or where we've been unconvincing but got the points, most of those games involve a lot of moments where Mickey van der Ven does some world-class, top-tier sprint, sprinting and clearing of the danger zone. Or, and or, sometimes both, Vicario has an out-of-this-world day where he makes two or three world-class saves. Against teams like Newcastle, where you have Eddie Howe, who's one of the better exploitative managers, probably only behind Unai Emery, in terms of being able to set up your team in any particular shape you want to be able to combat the strengths and, and exploit the vulnerabilities of the opposition. You didn't have a good performance from Mickey van der Ven, and you didn't really have a save from, from Vicario. And consequently, we got put to the sword. Now, I don't think that you can rely on world-class defending from Mickey van der Ven every single game to keep you out of trouble and or two or three world-class saves from Vicario against any team anywhere in the league. You can go back and remember a save that he made against Luton or Sheffield United or Wolves or whoever to keep us in the game. And to me, if we're already conceding 49 goals and that also includes the majority of the games having moments where we should have conceded more, then there's an issue with our defence. And yet, when you remember the fact that our defence is, our first team defence is pretty set for next season and all we're going to improve is, is backups or squad players, then that's a real concern. Because even though I believe that that monster six that I've been talking about for nine months is going to improve the ability to win the midfield battle, that in and of itself, even if you get that particular transfer spot on, is not going to be responsible for 20 fewer goals. So something has to change. And I think most of us would love to see, even Ange's strongest supporters on this channel, the ones that, that can't stand to hear anybody critique or criticise anything that he does. I'm sure everybody believes that a plan B or adaptability is a desirable asset. You know, 
not spending any time doing any planning, preparation, consideration or thinking about what your opposition look like, who they are and how they will set up is I'm not, I don't, is, is it arrogant? Is it obnoxious? I, I don't know what it is, but I think it's foolish, really foolish, because not only are you going to be unprepared for their ability to exploit you, but you, you're missing out on the opportunity of figuring out how to exploit them. Like the, Every team has got vulnerabilities, and if you're not even thinking about them, then you're missing a trick. And I, it, it does concern me that there is no plan B. When Eric Dyer said in that interview, in the six months I was under Ange, we didn't do any tactical work. All we did was spend all week setting up the way we're going to play. You know? And I, I just worry a little bit whether or not Ange is, is, uh, is too proud. Now that he said it's who we are, we're not going to change plan A, plan B is to do plan A better then if that's let's use those words for a minute plan b is to do plan a better have tottenham improved are tottenham playing better football i'm not just this is not just a reaction to the newcastle game by the way because if you remember from my reaction video i said there's some teams that are just set up with the ingredients that they have to be a counterbalance the the the, the polar opposite the the kryptonite to superman for a certain system and Newcastle's version of their squad that was available was was the perfect counterbalance when they had three midfielders that are tougher in the tackle that went to man mark and played and won the midfield battle and then on top of that you have three incredibly fast forwards that are sitting on the shoulder and in fact at times sitting beyond the shoulder of our defence because our defence was eight yards inside the opposition half so they could be four yards behind us and still be on side because they're in their own half. Absolute madness. There's just no need, there's absolutely no need in any way, shape or form for Mickey van der Ven and Romero or whoever else it is that's hanging back to be three or four yards inside the opposition half if you have an opposition player standing behind you. Absolutely madness. And that sort of thing needs to be, needs to be sorted out by the players on the pitch rather than you know, anything from the sideline. That's just common sense. But anyway, uh, the question was, are we improving? And I think that, I don't think we are. I think that the first 10 games was our best sort of 10 games period of the season. Then you had the injuries and every, then all the volatility in the performances were, were kind of excusable. Oh, you know, wait until we get our centre-backs back, wait until we get Madison back, etc. But for the last two months now, three months, we've had pretty much our first team back. A couple of people have been missing here and there, but we generally speaking had a strong enough squad to compete. And I don't think we are progressing. And I think that the reason why the, the, our best version of ourselves was at the start was because the sample size uh, of, of, of other teams' abilities to understand how Tottenham play was too small. We took advantage of that. They didn't expect or know how to set up against us. And since then, there is a larger and larger sample size to know how to play against Tottenham. You know, threaten from corner kicks, put it into that kind of corridor of uncertainty, bang balls in from deep. We're terrible aerially defensively. And obviously win the midfield battle, go man to man and, and knock it long. If you've got a fast player, you should be okay. That template's been figured out and it comes back to the thing I've always been saying, if you're only going to play a system, one system one way, then how well you do will depend on who wins the, the cat and mouse race between the teams figuring out how to play against you and you improving on the version of yourself that you're playing. And I don't think that we have improved. I don't think, we are, I don't think we're any better at defending corners. I don't think we're any smarter at playing the line. If anything, I feel like James Madison, I know he's taken ages to get back from his fitness, but I don't think it's necessarily just his fitness. I actually think he's getting a little bit frustrated by the over compression of space in the final third. When you have Van der Ven and, and Romero like on the edge of the centre circle part of the halfway line, you have Pedro Porro and Udogi on the, on the corners of the box. You have Timo Werner, Brennan Johnson, Sonny and 
two other players in there as well. There's too many players in there, and I don't think Tottenham have got the, the technicalities. And even James Madison, who's got the quickest feet of them all, I don't think he particularly enjoys playing with that little space. And so when there is a mistake, and there will always be when there's that many players compressed into that smaller space, there'll always be some sort of pinball action. Then when it falls to the opposition, again, you're playing into their hands, bang it long. And if you've got a fast player at the top end of the pitch who's good with the ball at his feet, unless you're going to get a Mickey van der Ven masterclass or a Vicario masterclass, then you're one nil down. It's an unsustainable model against certain teams. Against other teams that don't have the ingredients to be able to, to take advantage of it, we'll be fine. But for me, you know, this is the point I was making about Calafiori. The defence isn't going to change. I was saying on yesterday's video, on Saturday's video, if the, if the tactics aren't going to change because Ange is, plays his way and it's who we are, mate, then the players will need to be better. But at the back four, I think we've already got what we've got. I don't think we're going to improve in that regard. So how do we stop 20, how do we get 20 fewer goals going in or, you know, we, we, we're going to need to score four or five goals every game to win, to win the league, if that's his ambitions. And, you know, we're not going to do that with Timo Werner, you know, Brennan Johnson, Richarlison and Sonny and Madison. Wholesale changes needed, guys. The second transfer um, clue that, or news that was out today, this is the other thing that was frustrating. Keane and Dewsbury Hall from Leicester. Look, a really good player, 25 years old, was in the Premier League last year with James Madison. They got relegated. And I'm not going to base my opinion of him as a signing on the fact that he's, you know, went, went down from the Premier League. But does he really excite you as the guy? Look, he, I think he scored 14 goals and 12 assists in, uh, in the Championship. Leicester are doing very well. He's their best player, probably the player of the season in the Championship. Leicester have got financial fair play issues, but the price target apparently is 30 to 40 million pounds. I'm sorry, unless this is a homegrown uh, need thing, this doesn't excite me in any way, shape or form. If Tottenham need to get from fourth or fifth to first, and we're trying to find a way to concede fewer goals, but can't really improve on the tactics or on the, on the defense, then we're going to need to find a way to score about twice as many goals as we currently are. And, you know, I don't want to be hearing Keane and Dewsbury Hall. Not that I don't think he's a good player, but I just don't think that's the right statement of intent. I think we need um, someone who's more of a leader on the pitch, someone who's more experienced, someone who is more uh, capable in tight, com complex areas, and, and somebody that's going to cheer... You know, get everybody sort of sitting up straight saying, wow, Tottenham mean business this year. And I don't think Dewsbury Hall's the guy. Still think he's a very good player, but not for me. Anyway, guys, sorry about this. Sorry if this is a moan. It's just, I, I'm just trying to kind of figure out, like, how do you go from where you are to the next level if we're not improving faster than the opposition are figuring, figuring us out? And we're not prepared to change tactics. I don't know. Lots of live streams this week to talk about it with you guys. I'll speak to you later on. Have a good day. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, bye-bye.